so since filming that last section about a week has elapsed and that's because I had a practice at a seat cushion and a back cushion and then I ran out of fabric so I had to order some new fabric which did actually come very quickly but this is the first chance I've actually had to get back to working on the sofa I also have to apologise for my voice and if I start coughing at any point during the video I'll try to cut it out but I have got a terrible sore throat and cold at the moment which doesn't help but I just couldn't wait to get back to the sofa so <laughs> we're now going to cut the foam for the cushions and originally and you probably saw me post these pictures up on uh, Facebook or Instagram I stuck the foam to a piece of card and then cut around that but when I come to cover it and it actually covered okay and then I'm going to use a strip around the outside just to tidy up all the sort of folds and tucks and everything but when I come to do the piping it didn't quite work out how I wanted it to I want that piping to look as neat as it does around the arms so I'm not going to do it that way this time and I think I've come up with a way of doing a really nice neat line of piping around the cushions so I'm going to actually try that now but let's get the foam cut first of all make sure you've got a straight edge and we're going to measure from there and for the the seat cushions we're going to do a 58 millimeter square and that's two and nine thirty seconds of an inch so you can just mark onto the foam using pencil so 58 millimeters and so that I'm not sort of cutting squares out of my foam I'm just going to cut a whole section that is that width mark that up like that and I'll just cut that first try and use big sweeps of your scissors rather than um, doing lots of little cuts and then you'll get a straighter line but we will be obviously covering it all with fabric so if you've got any sort of little bumps in your cut line it won't matter too much and then I'll cut the two pieces I need 58 millimetres again, 2 and 9 30 seconds of an inch, and that's leaving about a millimetre between each cushion. And again, before I cut them exactly to size, when I covered them, it was a little bit of a tight fit. So we're going to leave just a tiny little bit between each cushion, which will allow for that piping that we'll be adding so that it doesn't look like it's sort of squashed together. And that's the seat ones. Those on there like that. You can see we've just got a little bit of a gap down the centre and once we put the fabric on that won't be there but they'll just fit nicely together. And that's another thing I actually had to look up, um, actually went through some images on Instagram because I couldn't, just from in my mind's eye, I couldn't work out whether the seat cushion went all the way back and then sort of the back cushion sat on top of it or whether the back cushion was behind and the seat cushion sat in front and we've actually got a like a Chesterfield fabric sofa um, so that didn't help so I had to look at some pictures and it and I think it turns out that it can be either way so some you'll find where the back cushions are sitting on top and some where the seat cushions are at the front like that and that's how we're going to do ours just because I think it looks a little bit neater in this scale and then for the back cushions we're going to do a piece that is 75 millimetres by 60 millimetres and then we'll cut out a section for the um, to go over the arms and that in inches is 2 and 61 60 fourths by 2 and 23 60 fourths so again I'm just cutting across the piece first for the shorter measurement that and then 75 millimeters or 2 and 61 64 of an inch across and again that's leaving a little bit between the cushions and 
We're now going to cut out that corner section to go over the arm. So begin by making a pencil line 19 millimetres, that's three quarters of an inch, at the top and bottom like that. Join that up. And use pen if it's easier to see. And then we're going to make a pencil line on this inner sort of edge at 28 millimetres. Just do a little mark like that. And that is 1 and 7 64ths of an inch. And then on this outer edge, we're going to do a little mark at 34 millimetres. And that is 1 and 11 30 seconds of an inch. And then just draw a, a curve from one to the other, or line. And then it's this bottom bit that we're cutting out. Just snip up there like that. And then go down from that higher mark down to your lower mark. And that then fits over that arm. And don't worry that we haven't got the exact curve there, because once we've added the fabric and the piping, that will all just sit snugly against that arm, sort of like that. And this is also just a little bit higher than the back. Get that in there properly. Got about five millimetres just under a quarter of an inch higher at the back, so we'll be covering all of that so that won't be visible from the back. And then you want to do that same thing again um, with your other piece of foam. And what you can actually do is use your first piece as a template. Excuse me. So just draw the line the other piece of foam in there like that and then cut that out and that will be on the other side like that so in a moment we're going to stick these foam pieces to a piece of card and we're going to be applying card to both sides of each piece, but we'll come on to that. But whilst we can carry on while these pieces are drying, I just want to measure the bunker for each cushion to make the piping. So starting with your seat cushion, just lay the bunker around the edge like that. Work it around, making sure you don't pull it in at the corner too much. Like that. And then up there like that. And then just add on about an extra inch just to be on the safe side. And this is quite stretchy, so don't pull it as you're going around either. And snip that off. So then you want two long pieces like that for the top of the seat cushion. And then on the underside, we're only going to be applying the piping along the front edge. And then we're going to go back probably about... I don't know, 10 mil or something on either side. So for the bottom edge, just lay the bunker across like that with a bit of an overhang at each side and then snip that off. So you want two pieces like that for the bottom bit of each seat cushion and then that long piece to go around the top of each seat cushion. So you'll have two long pieces and two short pieces. So let me just cut another piece like that. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that's the seat cushion. And then we're going to do the same again with the back cushion. And this time, I'm going to keep it that way round. We're not going to go along the bottom edge because that's going to be hidden and it's going to be glued into place as well. So there's no need to do it along there. But again, leave a little bit of an overhang and then work the bunker around the edge like that. Again, not pulling it tight so you don't stretch it. And then I'm gonna leave a little bit of an overhang at that side as well. 
again just so we don't get there and then discover we haven't got enough and we want four pieces like that and we'll do the same on the front and back put those there I've got my seat ones over there I'll just pop that back in the bag we're now going to glue these pieces of foam to a piece of card and I'm just going to use this piece that I've been using on my desk so apply glue to the card that's probably too much as usual and then spread that out I'm going right along that edge so I'm actually gluing the pieces along a straight edge so start gluing the pieces into place and you want to leave a little bit of a border between them so that we can get our scissors in there to cut round them. Do that piece like that. And you then want to weigh those down with some heavy books. And leave them to dry. Okay, we're now going to create our piping and I've done a piece here just to show you what we'll end up with. So basically we're just gluing the piping in the centre of a piece of fabric and then opening out the back seams or hems like this so we've got a nice flat back piece and then we've got that lovely bit of piping along the front there. Now I know this isn't the traditional way of doing piping but I'm not a very good stitcher and I've tried piping in the past and it never looks as good as I want it to so I've come up with a way which hopefully will be easier and will look just as good and I hope you'll agree as well so cut a piece of fabric that is as long as the pieces of um, bunker that we've just cut and about 20 millimeters or three quarters of an inch wide just bring those over and then just begin by applying a line of glue along the centre of the piece of fabric. Has anybody else got a cold at the moment? Normally quite lucky, I don't get a lot of colds thankfully. When I do I try to work through them but I know that's e a lot easier said when you work from home. I know when you sort of have to go out to work and sort of stay there for a set of number of hours it can be a bit of a struggle so I sympathise if that's you. you and you always tend to get worse in the evenings do you find that you get a little bit more bunged up a little bit more throaty so if I start getting like that around sort of five o'clock I can just call it a day but I know if you're out at work you can't always do that so if you're not feeling too well at the moment I hope you get better soon. Okay, so just lay the bunker along the centre like that. And then we're going to fold that in. So fold the fabric over and keep sort of pushing the bunker into the crease, if you like. Like that. Make sure you fold your fabric in half. I've had a sort of practice run and I found that my fabric was sort of going off in one direction and I hadn't got enough at the bottom here. So keep it so that you've got an even flap at either side of the bunker. And then just use your nail to sort of crease the bunker in like that to create that really nice sharp piped edge like that. And then before our glue has a chance to start drying, open it out. So we're creating that nice flat edge. And even if you can just see the bunker, that's okay, as long as you're sort of leaving it encased in there. And again, this was all sort of trial and error because I just left it to dry, folded in half, and then realised that I needed this seam so I try to pull pieces apart once they've got the glue on 
once they've glued together you'll just be fraying your fabric so do make sure you do this before the glue dries if you open it up a little bit too much then just crease the bunker back in like that doesn't matter if you can see a little bit but you don't want it fully exposed because then you won't be creating that nice sharp piped edge <coughs> it up like that. And you want it to look flat with just the piping on the other side. And have a look from the other side and that's nice you've got that nice sharp piping along there. So then leave that piece to dry as well and do the same with your shorter pieces which are going to be going underneath the cushion. And we'll do the same as well with the longer pieces for the back cushions. The foam has now dried to the card, so I'm going to cut these pieces out. And it's just curled up a little bit because once I took the books off, I just stuck it on the radiator to make sure it was completely dry. So cut around the pieces and make sure there's no card sticking out. If anything, it's better just to cut a little bit shorter than the foam so that the cardboard is on the inside of the foam rather than sticking out. And then we won't get any ridges in our fabric. So you just angle your scissors as you go around the outside. We then want to stick card to the other side of the foam as well so once again just apply the glue to your card once again stick those down again leaving a bit of a gap in between And again, just weigh those down and leave them to dry. So the card has now dried on both sides of the foam. And we're now going to apply masking tape to each piece. So starting on what will be the top, or the, the actual part that you sit on, apply tape all across the card. And then put a piece across there and we can just trim off the overhang and start the other piece with that. Stick that on there. Once you go a little bit wonky with it, you can never get it straight again, can you? It's so sticky. <laughs> I thought I was being really clever by using that piece to start it off with. I thought that would fit perfectly, but it's still got a bit to trim off. Trim that off. I'll get rid of that piece, but I do just want to stick another couple of pieces on the underside. And just this time, just towards the front edge. So we need to do that little fill-in bit at the back. And this will be the bottom where we're just going to have the piping around that front edge and a little way around the sides. So remember this is your front edge where you've got the two pieces of tape. <coughs> and the same on this piece. So we'll start around the top edge. So bring in your longest piece of piping for your seat cushion. Have some glue ready and then remove the double sided tape back in just on the top. 
And again, this is another one of those sort of trial and error things. I just tried with using glue to attach the piping, but because the glue takes so long to dry, I just found that by having one side with masking tape, um, sorry, with double-sided tape, just makes it easier. You've got a little bit more control. And we'll just then apply glue around the foam at the edges. So check which is your front edge, and that'll be the bit with the two bits of tape. So that's here. And then start attaching your piece of piping in the middle at the front and just have a look to make sure you've got the same amount overhanging at each side so that you've got enough to go around and join at the back and then you want to lay it so that flap is along the top and your piece of piping is right on the corner not sure the best angle to sort of show you from, but I'm sure you know what I mean. So this bit of piping is running at the other edge, right along the edge of that piece of card, and sort of sticking at an angle, rather than either sticking forward or sticking up, like that. And then bring it around at the side, and we're going to glue it to the foam afterwards. So again, we're just leaving a little corner sticking up at the corner there, a little flap, rather. And then you're bringing this around again so that your piping is again at a diagonal to the top and side. And that little flap will just fold quite neatly underneath when we come to fit the top cushion. You're going to do the same at the other corner. So bring it around like that. And you've got that little flap there and if you find you've got too much of a flap we can just snip that off because that's not going to be seen now I'm just creasing in the corners there you want them to be nice and square rather than rounded and then bring one side around the back like that okay tuck it in your little corner fold, crease your corner in and then this piece we want to exactly um, cut off where this bit starts so that we've got no overlapping. So just sort of try it for size first. Work out where you need to cut, hold it with your thumb and then I'm just going to check again. <laughs> What's that old saying? Check twice, cut once or something. And I've just put my finger in the glue yet again. I'm just glad it's on a piece of the fabric that I'll be cutting off. Right, let's bring that round again. I just want to try that again. Right, so I'm going to go there. Snip that off. And then do exactly the same with that piece. Trying to stick together. And I've actually left it just a tiny bit too long, but that's better than cutting too much off. So always leave a bit, you know, if you're not sure. Like that, and then there. And I'm now just going to stretch that a tiny bit so that those two bits meet up there. I'm going to put a piece of card on here covered in wadding which will then be covered with fabric to give us that nice sort of rounded cushion. And once we've done that we won't see that little join anyway but it's always best to try and get it as absolutely neat as you can so to for the actual pipe in there to be joining or to look as though it's joining. I'm quite pleased with that. I think that's gone quite well. And then what we're going to do is just work around and just tuck a little bit of glue under the fabric. And we're going to be putting another strip of fabric 
all the way around which will hold these down as well so this is really just for neatness you need a little bit of glue underneath and then that sticks it down nicely and it just works so much better with the masking um, I keep calling it masking tape with the um, double sided tape because you've got that lovely neat join and when I was struggling around with the fabric and I, I didn't use the card on the, the foam either I thought I could just stick it to the foam and it just wasn't working and you could probably get it to work but it's one of those cases where it's never quite as neat as you want it to be so whenever you're having a go at something for the first time just keep trying different things and you'll get there in the end because you know in your mind's eye how you want it to look so don't don't just sort of settle and I think that's my whole sort of lesson that I've learned from having to totally redo my doll's house interior and to not settle for anything okay so that's that bit we're now going to do exactly the same thing around this front bottom edge so again remove the back in and then bring in one of your shorter pieces and again you want to make sure you've got an even amount overhanging at each side and again make sure that's at an angle to the front edge and same thing again go around and I think I used a little bit more glue on this because it feels a little bit stiffer to um, work around like that to, to bend so if you're finding that that's probably just because you've put a little bit more glue on but it'll still go around you'll still be able to sort of ease it around like that oops I just pulled that off because I hadn't made a nice neat corner there I'd pulled it a little bit tight and it had gone a bit rounded so even with this double sided tape you can pull it back a little bit if you need to I just want to neaten that up squeeze those corners in and I've got enough glue on the side there to hold it and that side I might just tuck a little bit under that front flap but do put more on the sides if you need to again we're covering all of this so don't worry about the excess glue at the front there And stick that down and I think even at this stage you can already see a nice seat cushion forming this will all be covered with one strip of fabric so that is done for the moment so that can go to one side and be left to dry and then you want to do the same thing again with your other seat cushion the back cushions are going to be a little bit more difficult because we've got that shaping but we'll have a go at those next so bring in your back cushions now and again we're going to apply the double sided tape to each side of each piece all the way along like that and then we can trim that little shaped bit out same with that bottom edge we want to do the same on the other side as well so same thing again with these and it might be a little bit more difficult now we've got the shaped edge but we'll We'll have a go. So remove 
the double sided tape back in on one side and remember we're not doing along the bottom edge so we want to treat this top edge here as our sort of front edge if you know what I mean and we'll start there so we'll take one of the pieces and again make sure we're sort of laying it centrally and then lay that first piece across the top edge pushing the pipe in right along the edge of the card press it into place you can also have a look from the side to make sure that the piping is along that edge of the fabric work around again do the straight side first a bit easier get your little corner folded in and then bring that side down again have a peep in from the side make sure you're in the right place and same thing again along that bottom to fold that corner in and I know we're going to be gluing the bottom but as I've got the fabric there I might as well fold it around rather than trim it off we don't have to bother then sort of joining those up in the middle there when you pull your corner around try not to lift up the fabric that you've just stuck in place creasing that corner in and then bring it round like that so that bit's quite straightforward because you're just going down a straight edge it's going to be this piece now so Bring it round and tuck it right into that little corner. Create your corner on the first edge there. Tuck that in. And then bring it down like that and you're not going to have as much to fold round there. So you'll have a little sort of crease. If there was a way I could have perhaps prevented that. I don't want to snip into the fabric, that's the only thing. That down there. And again, don't forget this is all going to be covered, so we're going to be able to tuck that in behind our piece of cardboard. So I think that's going to look alright. The, the outside edge, the important bit, looks okay. And again, that will be um, sort of butted up against the the arm of the sofa and then I'm actually just going to trim that off not all the way but just leaving a little bit of an overhang and then fold that round as well stick that down and again just come in with a little bit of glue underneath the folds of fabric just to stick those against the foam and this is another opportunity to tidy up that tidy up that corner some in there as well and that actually came off of the tape there so I 
I think what I'll do is put a little bit of glue underneath that bit of fabric as well. Just that stubborn bit there. And it's only being like that because it's not sort of got anything to cling to really. Oh, there's too many shapes and folds needed. Just glue that down. Now let me just bring the sofa in at this stage. Just to put your mind at rest that isn't going to look absolutely messy. And you'll see when that's in place, and don't forget we'll have the um, cushion on the front as well to cover this corner. So it's really just that outer edge you're looking at and how that folds there around the edge of the arm. And I think that's going to look fine. So don't worry about it looking a bit messy at this stage. Pop that back there. And then we're doing exactly the same thing again on the other side. I should have got my card to protect the fabric really. At least I've got a cleanish piece here yet. I don't want to put that down on the cutting mat. Okay, so same thing again, make sure you're in the centre there. And of course the beauty with these cushions is that if you've got a better side, you can have that facing the front. So we'll see what they look like when we're done. So I'm just trying to get hold of that and make a little sort of corner there. I hope my fingers aren't getting in the way too much. It's quite tricky. Doing it at this angle in front of the camera as well. So let's do it like that. Actually, I think that went a little bit better actually. And you'll find that as well when you're doing a project where you've sort of got repeat bits, you seem to get better on the sort of second go. That's why it's always a good idea to have practice runs at things. Yeah, that went a little bit better there. I'm not sure what I did differently. Perhaps you might see while you're watching watching the video, but might have just been lucky actually. And then join that along the bottom there. But that's not too bad. So once I've done the other um, seat the uh, back cushion, I'll see which is the nicest edge. And we'll have that facing forwards. Pulling off these um, threads now as well. Put a little bit of glue along the bottom where it just came off. Pop that there. And then do the same with the remaining back cushion. We're now going to apply the fabric around the edges of the cushions. So to cut um, your strips or for the length for the strips, actually place the um, cushion onto the piece of fabric and work it along like that and that will give you the length and leave a little bit overhanging at each end just to be on the safe side for when we get around to the back edge. And then the same with your back cushions and on that you can actually, because we've got that sort of rounded bit, you can actually fold the fabric around to get the exact measurement and again I've left a bit extra at each end. Probably a bit too much but it's it's better to have too much there and cut it off than get round there and find you haven't got enough. And for the thickness I've cut these 25 millimeters or one inch thick. So I'll start with the seat cushions which are the shorter pieces. So begin by folding over a hem probably of about five millimeters but you don't have to measure so just you know five millimeters a quarter of an inch or so and we want to crease in a nice sharp hem or seam like that bring in your cushion and lay the folded seam 
so it's just underneath that top piece of piping as close to it as you can get and then you can just work out where you need to do your next hem so again use your nail to crease in a little line above the bottom piece of piping and that's where the next hem will go it's just to get an exact size so on this side I don't need to fold so much over and then you can just double check you've got a nice fit which that is and we'll be able to manipulate it as well once we've got the glue on so do that for each seat cushion and then what we're going to do is put a piece of um, webbing in there and iron that completely flat so I've I've got the one inch um, wide webbing so I've just cut a strip as long as my piece of fabric and then cut it in half lengthways but you might have that thinner one and I'm going to try and get some of that as well I think it would be better for these sort of projects so then you'll just put that in there and then iron it in so you've got lovely sharp seams along there put that piece to one side and do the second piece and do actually check it against the other cushion just to make sure they should be roughly about the same but don't just assume that they are going to be exactly the same so I've done a practice run here so that's the strip just sort of fed around the edge of the cushion and a couple of things um, I just picked up on I put a strip of fabric along the back of the strip just because obviously you can't iron over that webbing as it just sticks to the bottom of your iron so I just put a strip over and then ironed over the whole thing and then I had to trim it away because it was just overhanging a little bit but it's probably best if you cut your initial strip a little bit thicker so that you can fold it over so you haven't got that gap down the middle and then your webbing will be enclosed in there so that's one thing and then when I come to lay the strip around the cushion because the fabric is quite thin you can still see that ridge underneath so what I did was just lay a little tiny bit of wadding along the front edge like that and we don't need to glue it you can just lay it there and then we'll feed this strip around it just so we've got a little bit of cushioning showing at the front there and none of the sort of folds of the fabric from underneath are showing through so that's another thing as well so cover up your webbing if you've got a gap if not cut your initial strip of fabric a bit wider so you can enclose it in and then we'll use this little strip of wadding as well so apply glue to the back of the strip and you want to get it right along the edges because it's those edges that we really need to press down against the cushion and bring in your cushion make sure you've got the front face in you and that's the bit with the piping around the front edge and then take your piece of fabric and again get it so that it's in the center so you've got an even overhang at each side you just prop that against there for a moment so put that front bit on first covering up that bit of wadding we want to enclose that bit of wadding as well have a clean cocktail stick handy so that you can push that wadding inside if it's not staying under the fabric and what I'm doing is I'm just getting this front bit into position first that's the important bit the bit that we're going to see so push it against the piping at the top and bottom and we're trying to create the look that there's no join there then you can pull it around the sides and the back try and keep it within the piping but obviously it's not as important around there because it won't be seen come around the back and then you can just trim off a bit of the flap at the back there stick that down and then concentrate on the front there make sure it's all sticking down so the 
fold of the fabric should be right above the pipe in there. I've got a bit of wadding sticking out at the corner there, so I'm just going to poke that back in. And if you need to put any extra um, glue on, then do so, but just be really careful that you don't mark the fabric. And I'm going to stick a little bit extra glue along that top join there. Be really careful there. Only getting it on the inside edge of the fabric and not onto the piping. glue that down. <coughs> really squeeze it together. I think I just need a little bit extra glue along that bottom as well. So just concentrate really on the front once you've got the strips sucked down, stuck down along the sides and back. I'm now going to leave that piece to dry and we want to do exactly the same thing again with the back cushions. So take your fabric and begin by folding in that seam and I think I'm just going to get myself a fresh piece of card. I've got a lot of glue on this one now. So same thing again with this one. And because this one was a bit wider I was able just to iron along each fold. I do think it would be easier to use the thicker fabric. So apply the glue along the back, making sure you get it right along the edges. This time we're going to concentrate on this top section and this side piece that will be visible once the cushion is glued into place on the sofa. So again, put your strip so that it's central over the top like that so you've got enough to wrap around the sides and the bottom and again you just want to glue it just behind the piping try and blend it in squeeze it all together so glue it around the bottom like that these side bits won't be seen so I'm not concentrating as much on there again have your dry clean cocktail stick handy to tuck in any little pulls. Might actually ha have to cut that one off. And just blend that join in behind the piping around that side as well. Try not to get glue on the fabric. And tuck it into that curve. Again, these bits won't be seen. But still try and get it laying nice and flat. And then around the bottom, and I'm just going to trim a little bit off again. And then glue that down. So just spend a bit of time blending it all in, making sure it's sticking properly. Bring the sofa in and try that in place like that. And when it's in place, that looks quite neat. And from the side there as well. So I've done my practice cushion here. So that's the finished seat cushion now. So bring in your cushion and we're going to begin just by cutting away these little corner flaps on the inside of the cushion. So just very carefully, careful not to cut through your piping. And this is just so we've got a flatter base in there. Do that at each corner. Can't quite get into the corner, I would need some smaller scissors. That will do. I've got rid of the main bulk of the fabric in there. And then cut a piece of card 
that is 55 millimeters square and that's 2 and 11 64 of an inch square and then just try that on the inside of your seat so feed it in in between the piping or on the inside of the piping rather if any of it is a bit tight and you need to just trim away just trim away a little bit from one edge and then try it again and trim more if you need to but try not to cut too much off because we want it to be nice and tight on the inside edge there okay so take that out apply double-sided tape to the back of the piece and then cut yourself a piece of wadding that we're just going to sit on top of the cardboard like that and also cut yourself a piece of fabric leaving about an inch 25 millimeter border at each edge so remove the double-sided tape back in and then just put that down on top of the wadding there and then pull over the front flap of fabric and you don't need to um, pull too tightly but do sort of pull firmly so you've got a nice edge along the front there and then push your card into position so you've got a straight line along there and pull over the remaining flap and again not pulling it too tightly we don't want to bend the card but you want a nice smooth surface at the front there and then we're going to cut out these corner squares so just go in with your scissors like that and cut away each corner and then cut each flap at an angle then apply glue to the back of the cushion Way down like that, oops, and then pull over the triangle like that again, not too tightly, so you've got an even line along there. Don't worry about those corners because they're going to be tucked in, and then apply glue along the other edge, okay, pull that over, stick it down like that and then bring in your seat and we're going to apply glue on the inside edge I'm going to use my spreader for this and you want to get it right along the inside edge of the piping and spread it over the surface of the seat as well Careful not to get it on any of the fabric that will be visible. Like that. Make sure you've got clean fingers before you touch your seat cushion. And then we want to just slightly bend the cushion and push it into those corners so that you're hiding that little corner join of fabric there. Same at the other side and then sort of bend it that way as well to get it in at the back and you're sitting it just on the inside of that sort of piped ridge and then push it in and sort of slide the fabric out so that it's sticking along the inside edge of the piping and I've got gluey fingers again now so I'm going to use a cocktail stick to sort of push those corners in and on the inside of the piping. Do the same along the back edges, just pushing it all in and under. Make sure you've got nice neat corners. I'm sorry I keep hiding it but I'm sort of trying to keep the fabric flat as well as I'm doing it. So just keep sort of spreading it out and pushing it alongside the piping. That will help to sort of prevent any gapping around the edges. Just going along there, getting rid of that bit of excess glue as well. 
not quite happy with those corners, so I'm just going to use the cocktail stick again. Actually, let me get a thinner one and just push those in. I'm trying to sort of push the fabric under as I do it. Not sure if I was visible then. I want the piping to be on the outside edge of the cushion like that. bit of fabric there. I don't want to pull it off. So I'm just trying to push it in. So just work your way round, tidying it all up before the glue has a chance to completely set. Putting it in, in the corner there as well. Push it all round evenly like that. And that actually went better than the first one as well because I had a quite a wide gap at the front in the first one that I had to put a little bit extra glue in and it's still not as perfect as I'd like it to be and then I've just noticed that the flap of fabric I've glued around the back is showing over above the cushion so I'm just going to pull it back a little bit trying to be careful not to do any damage and this is at the back so it won't be seen and I'm just going to trim that off that onto the sofa as well. I just noticed that blob of glue there, cover it up with a bit of paper. So that will go in as well. And now we can do the back cushions in the same way. So that's the first back cushion done. Put that back over there. So again, cut a piece of card that is 72 by 57 millimetres, and that's 2 and 53 sixty-fourths of an inch by 2 and a quarter inches. And then do a line that is 18 millimetres in from this left-hand edge. And I didn't write that down, but that's 45 sixty-fourths of an inch, line down there. And then do a little mark 20 millimetres from the top, which is 25 30 seconds of an inch and 32 millimetres from the top, 1 and 17 sixty-fourths, and that's the little section that we're going to cut out. And just cut from sort of one line down to the other there. And then make sure you're the right way round, because when I was doing that cushion I put the double-sided tape on the wrong side, so I want that to go like that. And then first of all check it actually inside the cushion again. Don't worry too much about this corner because we'll have a little bit of bunched up fabric in there that we can just manipulate in with the cocktail stick. But just make sure that it fits inside, that there's no overhangs. Again the corners will be tucking in so don't worry if they're not rounded like the actual piped corners are. And then apply your double-sided tape to the back, and this will be my back bit now. And then just put the piece of card in the right way round behind that front cushion. And very lightly just draw a line along the top at the back of the cushion. And that will tell us where to put our wad into, because obviously we don't want the wad in behind the actual cushion because it will be pushing it forward. So then just cut a piece of wad in, just to go above that line. again leaving that border of about 25 millimetres one inch around the outside. Put that face down on the fabric there and remove your double sided back in. Put that back there. I'm going to bring the 
top piece over first, again not pulling too tightly and then bring the bottom edge up and then going to cut away these squares at the straight edge cut your triangles apply glue again pull that over Don't worry too much about the corners at this stage because they'll all be tucked in. And then at this end, cut away that top corner like that. And then cut away into the sort of shorter edge like that. Again, cut the triangles. Apply glue along the top edges. And then pull that sort of straight edge over first like that and hold on to it and then you can pull in that bottom bit so that you're creating a sort of flap. Then it looks very messy at this stage. You can then cut the excess of that flap off without going too close to the card and then pull that in as well. Push the excess fabric to the back but we'll do that when we stick it onto the actual seat cushion or back cushion rather. Like that so you'll just have a bit of a puckered bit of fabric in the corner there and then apply glue to your seat back again you want to get it around the inside of that piped lip like that and then again we're going to work the piece on the inside of the pipe in and so that we're tucking those corners in and concentrate on your top edge first because that's the edge that's going to be seen have your spare cocktail stick handy and then on that sort of fold just tuck it under as neatly as you can push in the fabric to the back of the piece like that Again, squeeze it all together so that your fabric is sort of sticking to the edge of the piping and my piping's quite high on this one so I'm trying to bring the fabric up to the top of it and then still neaten up the bottom edges just really so that it sits nicely on the sofa keep going round and making slight adjustments that went in quite nicely then see if I can leave that like that push that up a bit I just want to see if I can make a better job of that corner just really to get less of a sort of crease there or pucker pop a little bit more glue in in any areas that you need to I think now for fear of sort of overworking it and making it worse I'm going to leave it there and let's just try that in place
See what I mean about that corner, once it's actually in place, it doesn't look too bad. And we'll have um, sort of scatter cushions on there as well. Well, I, I plan to. If you've got any little bits you want to hide, that might be a good idea. <laughs> because the back of the cushion can be seen here at the back of the sofa, we're going to tidy that up with a piece of covered card like I've done here. So this is the one I've done. There's no need to go all the way down to the bottom because it's only really this little top bit that can be seen and this piece along the side here. Just pop that back into place. So cut a piece of card again that fits just inside that top part. And I just sort of laid a piece of card across there and then used my scissors to cut, cut around the curve as it's in situ like that and just trim so you've got a tiny little bit of border around the outside to make room for the fabric. Again apply masking tape to the back, cut your piece of fabric again so you've got that border 20 to 25 millimeters so just under an inch. You can then remove your double sided backing, almost said masking tape backing again. And again, pull the top piece over, and then the bottom piece. And again, we're going to cut those corners out. Snip those out like that. Cut them away and then snip your corners off. Again, apply the glue along the edge, glue that down, and then we'll do the same along this edge again. So snip that square out of there, along the little straight edge, and then snip along the longer edge there. Get rid of that as well. Again, trim the corners off, and we'll glue that down. So we'll probably glue all the way across. And again, we're going to shape that fabric around the curve as neatly as we can. Oh, so pull that down first, and then pull that side in making that little fold of fabric in the middle. Pull it in as much as you can so it fits around that curve. And then you can snip away that triangle of fabric there. And then it's easier this time to apply the glue to the back of the card. And again, we're going to put that in place so we're getting those top corners nice and neat first. So push the top corners into the corner behind the piping. And then just press it into place. It's only sort of that top and side bit that you can see, so that looks neat enough for the back of the sofa. We can now glue both of these back cushions into place. So remove all of the cushions and we're going to apply the glue directly to the sofa back. And just be really careful here that you're not getting it onto the arms. And then use your spreader to spread that all along the back edge there. I'm just going to take a bit there and just put it along that edge of the seat there, about as wide as the cushions, or as deep as the back cushions. Like that. And then you can bring them in. 
press them into place. Press them firmly. Push them down as well towards the seat part so that they're both the same level along the back. We don't want one sitting higher than the other. Now I'm just going to use my cocktail stick to get along that middle and just make sure that the piping is not tucked in one behind the other so they're sort of sitting next to each other and not hidden like that starting to look quite comfy and then I'm going to apply the glue just to the bottom of the seat cushions I don't think it matters which side they go. I'm just trying to wipe this glue off my finger. And I want to push these back as far as I can. So we'll actually be pushing them into the back cushion. But I don't want them to be sticking out too far beyond the arm. So push them back as much as you can. So push them down as well against the seat right into that back cushion. Just check the underneath there. I'll just bring in that cocktail stick and work it along the bottom there. And again I want the piping showing and no threads or anything hanging out. So tuck that all in neatly. Any little folds of fabric or anything you can see from the front. You can tuck those in at this stage as well. It's a good little time to hide any little errors. And that one as well. Push it back as far as you can. Make sure these two are level. Okay, you can come along that front edge. And I want to just get along that back edge as well. I can just see a little bit of glue coming out along there. Okay, so now I want to cover the bottom, and to do that I am just going to cut a piece of fabric the size of the bottom, probably leaving a couple of millimetres or even one millimetre border around the outside. So I've cut a piece of fabric here that just fits nicely over the bottom, but leaving a bit of a border around the edge. I don't want this to be visible, obviously from the front of the sofa when you're looking at it. So I'm going to have it further towards the back, but it just neatens it all up. And I'm just going to apply glue to the bottom of the sofa and then just stick this straight on. And I'm just actually looking for something that I can prop that up with. Let me go and find a little paint pot. So I prop that up and I'm just going to apply some glue to the bottom. And again, I just want to be really careful not to drip any of this over the fabric on the sofa. <clears throat> Spread that out again. The glue spread is picking up all the loose threads of fabric there. Just want to lay that in place and then really press it down along that front. Smooth out the wrinkles. For that side a little bit, and that just neatens it off. Okay, I'll leave that to dry for a moment. So when I made the calculations for the sofa, I wanted to add feet, and I added in eight millimeters for the feet, so just under three eighths of an inch, and then I added the base and the foam for the cushion without any fabric on it. So I forgot to add in 
a certain thickness for the piping and the fabric and the foam. So this now, up to the seat cushion, measures 38 millimetres or one and a half inches. And that actually is the height of any seat. So for any seat, when you're reducing to 12th scale, it will be 38 millimetres or one and a half inches. So I could leave it like that, but I really want to add the feet. And I think the feet will really make it into the sort of elegant sofa that I'm looking for. So I am still going to add them, so it just means that my seat is going to be about six millimetres higher than it should be. But I think in this case we'll allow for artistic licence. So you can leave yours like this if you want to. Another option is just to make a little square foot from a piece of 1.5 millimetre, one sixteenth of an inch um, sheet wood. I'm just trying to grab a little piece here. So you could just, obviously not that long, but you could just make a little square and then you could put four of those on like that. That might look quite nice, but I think that makes it look really modern. And I'm going for a more sort of Laura Ashley traditional style country house look in my study. But I think this could easily adapt into a modern um, sofa if you use those little square feet or didn't use any feet at all. But what I'm going to use are these 1 24th scale stair spindles. So they're 45 millimetres high and I've just cut the very top so I've left a little bit of the straight sort of post there and then I'm using the ball on top there as the actual foot. So I've just used my um, mitre block and saw to cut those and I've just left a tiny little bit of the square there. So I'm going to leave the feet in the natural wood which will match the study but if you want to you might want to stain them in a dark wood in a dark varnish or something like that or even paint them depending on obviously the style of your sofa. But like I say I'm going to leave them like this and I'm just going to go by eye and I want to attach them probably couple of millimetres from each corner. A little bit of glue there and I've picked the nicest ones to go at the front. One of them's got a bit of a, a knot in it, darker wood, so I'm going to put that at the back. In fact what I want to do is have it in the centre of that front arm. When I've just put that into place where I was going to put it, it didn't look quite right so I'm going to move it across to the centre of this strip of the arm and I think that actually looks a bit a bit more in keeping and then just a couple of millimetres back from the front and that one there one there as well and there is the completed sofa and I really love this despite its hundreds of faults <laughs> Now I said at the beginning that this really was me figuring it out as I went along. I've never made anything like this before and although I am pleased with the result because this is how I pictured it in my mind, I pictured it looking like this and I think it's good when you picture something that it turns out how you've sort of seen it, how you wanted it to turn out. But I must admit there are lots of things that I've done that I think could probably be a little bit cleaner maybe a little bit easier and I am determined to iron out all of those little creases quite literally. Looking at it now I wish I'd have put the wad in around the top and side of these back cushions as well like we did along the front if you remember. It's not too much of a problem because it's sort of how you're looking at it front on and in from the side like that where it will be positioned in the doll's house. But it's just, there's as I look at it, there's lots of little things that I look at and think that could be a little bit better. But having said that, I, I love this already and I'm going to use it in my doll's house. It will stay in my study as a sort of little memory of the first sofa that I ever made. And I will be remaking one in this style for my doll's house living room. And when I do that, I will try and address all of these little issues that I'm not happy with, with this one, and come up with a better way of doing it. And then I'll do another 
probably not full tutorial but we'll go through it all again and I'll, I'll tell you how I've done things differently but I really hope you'll have a go at this one but yeah I mean looking at it now I'm I'm really pleased with it and I think as well with some scatter cushions along here and I'm going to do a crocheted throw as well which we'll have draped over an arm or over the back or something will make this look really cosy and warm and inviting now do go along and join the Facebook group if you're not already a member that's little bits and pieces by you but if you just go to my Facebook page you'll find the link there to the group where you can request a membership and then in a probably not a couple of weeks I'll give you all a chance to have a go at it <laughs> maybe in a month or so we'll have an upholstered sofa day I must say I thoroughly enjoyed making this despite the cold and the congestion and the headache <laughs> and the gluey fingers and having to redo almost everything it's been a challenge but I, I found it really exciting and to see it finished now I just find it really satisfying and I hope that when you make it you'll feel really satisfied with it as well the scatter cushions I'll leave for another tutorial now because I think this has probably gone on long enough I'm sure you're thinking that as well maybe uh, make those in an episode of Doll's House Diary so that's it thank you so much for watching I hope my snuffles haven't put you off and I'll see you soon <laughs>